Hello students, in this video we are going to discuss about alternating current passing through the capacitor. So when AC source is connected to the capacitor, the alternating current is passing through that capacitor because the applied source, the applied voltage is alternating voltage. Okay, so let us find out the equation of this instantaneous current passing through the capacitor when this capacitance or this capacitor is connected to the alternating voltage source. Okay, so first consider, consider, consider an AC circuit, an AC circuit containing containing only a capacitor containing only a capacitor of capacitance of capacitance C of capacitance C across an AC source across an AC source so according to our consideration, we have AC source and this AC source is connected to the capacitors, sorry, capacitor of capacitance C. Capacitance C. So this is our AC source. Okay, this is our AC source. This AC source is applying alternating voltage to this capacitor. Okay, now the instantaneous applied voltage to the capacitor is given by the equation V equals to V naught sin omega T. Okay, so instantaneous voltage, instantaneous voltage, which is applied voltage, right? Which is applied voltage is given by is given by is given by the equation v equals to v naught sin omega t. So let us call it as equation number one. And in this equation, where v naught v naught is peak value of alternating voltage. Peak value of alternating voltage and this omega is angular frequency and it is given by 2 pi v of where of this frequency okay frequency of this AC source right okay now when this voltage is applied to the capacitor the charging and discharging process starts in this capacitor okay charging and discharging because the voltage, applied voltage is not a steady voltage. This applied voltage is a varying voltage with respect to time. And because of that, uh, the charging and discharging process continuously taking place inside this capacitor. Okay? So, if we consider at some time t, then the charge on the capacitor, that is the instantaneous charge on the capacitor is given by the equation. Okay? So, instantaneous instantaneous charge on the capacitor on the capacitor is given by this instantaneous charge okay that is the charge or discharge whatever it is but at that particular time the charge on the capacitor is Q equals to C into V so what is C? C is capacitance of this capacitor Notice Q, the charge at a particular time T, or this is simply instantaneous charge, and what is V? V is that varying voltage applied by this AC source. Okay, so now from this equation number one, we all know that this V is equal to V naught sin omega T. So it is a C into V naught sin omega T. So let us call it as equation number. Two. Equation number two. Okay. And now actually we wanted to find out uh, the alternating current passing through this capacitor, but we have the equation for charge. 
okay so now we are going to use the definition of current to find out the instantaneous current through this uh, capacitor okay so the instantaneous current the instantaneous instantaneous current is given by is given by so we all know that it is r equals to dq divided by dt so it is the definition of the current okay so it is a time derivative of charge and that gives us the instantaneous current and what is q from the equation number 2 the q is uh, c not sine omega t divided by dt so that will differentiate this whole term with respect to time t and this is c and v0 are constant because v0 is amplitude or peak value of AC voltage and c is the capacitance of the capacitor so let's take the outside of that derivative so it is c v0 into d by dt of sine omega t d by dt of a sine omega t okay so we all know that the differentiation of sine omega t is omega cos omega t right so this is now becomes c v naught omega cos omega t so the cos omega t is a varying term it is varying with respect to time but these terms are now constant c v naught omega right these terms are constant and this v naught is peak value so this is c and omega uh, capacitance and angular frequency and now I am going to take these C and omega on the denominator side and then it will become 1 divided by uh, omega C 1 divided by omega C and then into simply cos omega T okay and we want to compare this equation of current with equation of voltage so for simplification we are going to convert this cost or we are going to represent that cost in terms of sine only and we are going to get there sine equals to v naught divided by 1 divided by omega c into sine omega t plus pi by 2 because this cos omega t is equals to sine omega t plus pi by 2 okay so here in this equation this 1 divided by omega c which is there on the denominator of v naught actually represents the opposition offered by the capacitor to the alternating current so this 1 divided by omega c is opposition offered by the capacitor to the flow of alternating current and we call it as we call it as now this uh, 1 divided by omega c is considered as xc Xc and what is Xc? It is capacitive reactance. Xc is capacitive reactance. Capacitive reactance. So what's its function? It opposes the flow of alternating current. Okay, so that Xc is opposition offered by the capacitor to the flow of alternating current. Right? So this equation will now become this equation will now become uh, i equals to omega naught divided by xc into sine omega t plus pi by 2 sine omega t plus pi by 2 and from this equation we all know that this sine function is varying with respect to time it is actually the function of time so it is a varying quantity but this v0 divided by xc is a constant quantity okay and that constant actually gives us the peak value of instantaneous current i or simply the peak value of the alternating current so therefore this i is now equals to i0 sin omega t plus pi by 2 where where i0 is equals to v naught divided by xc i naught equals to v naught divided by xc so this equation this equation gives us this equation gives us the instant
instantaneous current through this capacitor. Instantaneous current passing through this capacitor. So let us call it as equation number 3. Let us call it as equation number 3. So equation number 3 gives us the instantaneous current passing through the capacitor of capacitance C. Okay. Yes, and now let us compare these two equations. Uh, equation number 1 and equation number 3. From equation number 1 and 3, it is very clear that uh, that current, instantaneous current, is actually ahead of voltage by pi by 2. By pi by 2. So here in the capacitor, the voltage is lagging behind the current by pi by 2. Okay? And to understand that, let us plot a graph. Uh, between Vi and Omega T Vi and Omega T So now we are going to plot a graph between Vi and T So graph between Vi and Omega T Okay, and the phase of the voltage is omega t, 
एंड फेस ऑफ द करंट इज देगा t प्लस फाइव बाई टू देगा t प्लस फाइव बाई टू एंड इफ यू वांट टू डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द फेजर्स देन यू ऑल नो दैट द वर्टिकल प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ द फेजर यू नो द इंस्टेंटेनियस वैल्यू सो द वर्टिकल प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ वोल्टेज फेजर विल बी यू द इंस्टेंटेनियस वोल्टेज एंड द वर्टिकल प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ करंट विल बी यू द इंस्टेंटेनियस करंट आई ओके सो दिस इज द फेजर डायग्राम फॉर पूरा कैपेसिटिव सर्किट ओके यस सो थैंक यू